Okay, now we want to provide a way for our users to sign up for an account. And the first thing we're going to do is create a user model uh, and controller. And it's really easy to do that with sales. Just type sales generate user. And now we have our user model and controller. Let's take a look at the code. So here's the user model and the user controller. And so we need to start fleshing that out for our sign-up page. And sales gives you the flexibility of taking different approaches to early stage development of your model. In a previous sales cast, I went over one approach, which was just to start the server and as a convenience, go directly into the browser and start creating attributes for our model. We're going to take a little bit different approach and that is we're going to go in and set attributes and a schema um, directly in our model. So in a sign up page I guess we want the name of the person that might be good. That'll be a type string and let's say their illustrious title And we'll have an email address here, and that'll be of type string. And we're going to deal with passwords. So I'll have uh, an encrypted password here, and that'll be of type string. So one of the advantages of going ahead and having a schema is that we can start validating the data. So for name, I'm going to have required equals true. I'm going to have to have a name when you save a record. And for email, there's some special validations for string, uh, email being one of them. So if I put email is equal to true, then there's going to have to be a valid email address when the record gets saved or when the model gets saved. And I'm going to go ahead and require it to be around. And if I could spell required. Um, and I also want it to be unique. OK, let's give those a try. I'm going to go ahead and start the server. And we will create. Let's say Earl Nathan and my, you know what, let's just put in that and see if the record gets created. And nope, it's going to give me um, some errors here because the email doesn't, wasn't in. Um, it's not a true email address and it's definitely not unique. So let's go back in here and put in a valid email address. And there we go. So we have Earl Nathan, I at I.com. So now that we have a model, we'll create a form that will capture all that data and then tie it all together with a controller. So let's go back into the code. And under views, we're going to create a new folder that corresponds to the controller, the user controller. We call it user. And we're going to create a new file. And this is where our new form is going to be. So I'm just going to put user sign up form just as a placeholder. And I'm going to save this as new.ejs. And new.ejs, the new, is going to be the action that's going to be within the user controller. So let's go into the user controller and I can create this action and all I want it to do when we hit uh, user slash new is just to return the view in this case new.ejs and let's do that so now let's go ahead and load the server And 
we'll go back to the home page. And now when I click sign up, I get that user sign up form. But how did we get that without creating a route? How did we map user new, that new action to the user controller without a route? Well, Sales has got this concept of blueprints. So we're gonna go back into the code and then we'll go to the routes.js file. And right now we only have one route, which is pointing to our static index page, which is the home page. There's some documentation here that outlines blueprints as basically of three types, action, crud or shortcut, and rest. I'm going to do a separate screencast that's going to take a pretty deep dive on different aspects of these three blueprints. For the purpose of this screencast, we're going to concentrate on action blueprints. And as the documentation says here, what's happening is sales is giving you or binding every action in a controller to its own route. So in our user controller, we have the new action and through action blueprints, we're automatically getting a route to this new action. I think the best way to illustrate this is to turn action blueprints off and then we'll build a route that is what sales is doing behind the scenes. So to turn those off, we can go to controllers.js and I'm actually going to turn all of the blueprints off. And I'm doing that by setting each one of these attributes to false. So let's go ahead and reload the server. And now that initial route we have is going to map to our index page. But when I type or when I click on sign up now, this is going to give me an error. All right, so let's build that route manually. So we're going to go back into routes.js. And there's a couple of different ways that we could create this route. The first is just putting in user slash new and assigning the view to be user slash new. And let's restart the server and refresh the page and we get our form. Another way to do it is we could actually go in here and assign the controller, in this case, user controller as an attribute, as well as the action, and get down to that granularity. Let's restart the server and refresh the page. So action blueprints can really save us a lot of time uh, from not having to create uh, these custom routes and letting it do it for us. In fact, for this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this route, save it, and then go back into controllers. I'm gonna leave the CRUD and REST blueprints uh, set to false, but I'm gonna turn the action blueprints back on. Let's go back into new.ejs and I'm going to populate this with the actual sign up HTML. And I also made a few changes to our custom CSS. I added some color variables as well as some styling particular to this form. So let's reload or refresh up the browser. And now we have a, a better looking form here. So in the next screencast, we're gonna hook this sign up page to the create action through our controller and our model. Thanks for watching.